In this video, we'll cover some of the system properties related to import sets. First, there are many system properties involved with import sets. This video looks at some of the more common ones to be familiar with. A link to the docs page with the import set properties is provided below. In an earlier video, we mentioned that we may want to inspect the import set field lengths during a test import to make any necessary adjustments to string field lengths. The system can do this automatically by setting the property com.glide.loader.verifyTargetFieldSize to true. The system default is false, which means any fields longer than the specified length are truncated. By setting this to true, if the imported data needs a string field longer than is currently available, the corresponding import set row field length is adjusted. Let's say we have imported 20 rows of users and nobody's email address was longer than 40 characters in that test set. The length of the field would be the default string length of 40 characters. However, if later the system encounters an email longer than 40 characters, it would truncate the email address if this property were not set or set to false. By setting it to true, the email field on the import set will be adjusted to be just long enough for the longest address it encounters. But be aware, this could have a performance impact since the database needs to do an alter operation every time it changes a field length. If we have a lot of import set rows in our system, it could take a while to do each alteration. Let's look at another property. If we're running a scheduled import that requires successful completion of the parent, we may want to consider setting the property glide.scheduledImport.stopOnError to true. This way, if the parent has an error, the import will stop, preventing the child from possibly creating additional errors. By default, the test import retrieves 20 records. In some cases, we may want more. Setting the property com.glide.loader.maxscanrows to a higher value like 50 or 100 could provide a better data sample. Now, interestingly enough, this property applies to JDBC, XLS, CSV and XML formats, but not JSON and XLSX. As we discussed in the episode with concurrent import sets, the maximum number of import sets used is 10, but we may want to change that by setting the property glide.scheduledImport.max.concurrent.importSets to another integer value. If we're importing CSV, we may want to set the property com.glide.csv.loader.ignore non-parsable lines to true to allow the import to continue by ignoring CSV lines that are not parsable. Ordinarily, the system would stop the import at the first sign of a problem. Here's one we might want to set if we encounter problems importing an XLSX file. Set the glide.xlsx.import.debug to true to enable debugging. And finally, a couple more properties to potentially help with general import set debugging. Setting com.glide.importset.importLogLevel to info, warning, or error controls how much import set logging happens. The system defaults to info. And glide.import.debug is a true-false property to enable or disable debug logging for all import processes. As noted earlier, these are just some of the properties you might find useful. Check out the link in this video for more information.